I guess the producer is uh, uh, less uh, uh, completely, I guess, wrapped up in the film um, to the point where it's the everyday life and they think about the film first thing they get up in the morning when I know what it's like you know I'm directing I'm always thinking about my characters what they're doing what's happening what might happen tomorrow whether I should get on the phone maybe there's a scene I can film with the next week the week after um, um, so they're always in your head um, as a producer you can step, step back a little bit and and um, you're essentially supporting the, the director to be able to make those decisions and carry on in this particular way. Um, so you're thinking of the, of the budget, and obviously, but also you're thinking of surrounding this person with you know, the people who can actually realise the project. Often the director comes to the film with you know, uh, a DOP and an, and an editor, or sometimes in the case, case with the sunny boy, She's also the DFP, <laughs> so it's really just the editor. Um, and um, as a producer, producer, you've got to be thinking ahead all the time. You've got to be thinking, well, when uh, is the story likely to come to its natural course? Um, when will the story... Is there going to be an ending, and what is that ending going to be? Uh, how will this ending play out in relation to the editing schedule? Um, do we have enough money in the budget to actually make two versions, a feature version and a, and a TV version? And I firmly believe that, yes, uh, it, you have to make a feature version if the film is really... If, well, if it's a good story and it's, and it's got the elements to actually carry it to, to feature length. And if you believe it has, as a producer, you have to basically call a shot on that one. Then you, you try and uh, adjust your post-production so it fits in with a, a, a festival uh, um, premiere um, so, so that the film is... I always tend to finish my films in uh, March, April, May so we can get a release, uh, first release at the Sydney Film Festival and then Melbourne and so on. So there's like a... Uh, and I'm not the only one who's doing that. <laughs> there are 20 other directors with films who are also trying to finish their documentaries at the same time and um, uh, try and get them... A, you know, assessed by the festival and get them into what's now called the Fox Doll competition, which is about 10 films max. And it's uh, probably the most prestigious documentary prize in Australia, the documentary. Of course, everybody wants, wants to get their films in. And there's a cash prize at the end as well. So you've got a re basically a release schedule for the film and you've got to work backwards from that, essentially. Um, but... There are many things that you have to worry about apart from that. And, you know, clearing music is, is the one big thing. Um, and often <laughs> when you're directing, it's, clearing music is one of the last things you, you do, but, also, but it's actually incredibly important. And the earlier that, that done, the better. So um, often it's useful to get a music supervisor on board, somebody who's actually done, does this as a speciality. Um, then there's preparing the website, um, which is very necessary. Um, once a film is released, you have to have a website so people can seek more information, find out where, where it's screening, but also get a sense of how they can maybe um, get involved more in the issues um, that the film's about. Uh, the film I made... Uh, a couple of years ago, The Hungry Tide. It was about global warming and climate change. It was set in the Pacific and Kiribati. People wanted to find out more about um, this particular uh, nation in the middle of the Pacific. <laughs> you know, uh, where, where is this place? Kiribati, etc. Um, but they also, uh, some of them wanted to connect with uh, a group of people who were actually trying to. Um, you know, get the issue in, into you know the into public discourse. You know. so, uh, in other words, they they wanted to uh, somehow contribute, somehow make a difference. You know, how could they help? Um, so through the website, you, you can get in touch with with, with an organisation that that actually represents um, um, the people of Kiribati and. and 
and um, their, their efforts are trying to um, create uh, awareness about climate change. So, so that was so. Website is, needs to be there, needs to be ready, and needs to be online. Um, probably not that far before the, the, the very first screening of the film, but at least a couple of weeks beforehand. Um, and of course, the Facebook page and um, uh, all the social media has to kind of travel alongside the film. So, as a producer. Um, Part of your time has to be to kind of be mindful of that and set that in train. Um, but of course, when a film is over, there's so many delivery items. Um, and you've got to make sure you've, you've got um, images. You, you have to uh, get a, a, an electronic uh, press kit together. Uh, you have to um, fill in application forms for festivals. You, you, you have to get these films to the festivals. You have to do, get the screeners, um, the DVDs, or, or on, you know, these days often, often just online links. Um, and then uh, you you have to get uh, an international distributor and a local one, if as well. International one hard to get, good one. Um, but if you're lucky enough to get one, then fantastic. But then of course you've got a service direct requirements, which is often versions of the film, you might have to cut the film back from the 56 minute length down to a 50 minute length. Uh, um, there, there's all sorts of things, a lot of them are quite boring and, and, and practical. And occasionally it's good to get a post-production supervisor who just does that work and leaves you to <laughs> get on with the next film. <laughs> I've only started using social media to create awareness around my films. This is a bit new to me, and I was a bit, uh, and I could have done more with my last film, The Hungry Tired, but with this particular film that I'm producing, um, the director Kay Harrison has done a lot of social media, uh, uh, and, the, and she started six months ago, and yeah, there's now a Facebook page. Um, and the Facebook page simply alerts people to the fact that there is going to be a film. Um, and that it's a film about um, this about Jeremy Oxley and um, the Sunny Boys have had a lot of fans, so of course everybody is interested in, in the film. But at no stage is Kay giving uh, you updates about what's happening uh, during the filmmaking process, um, and um, I think that's um, something that to be very wary about, particularly when you're making a long form documentary. And it's a very closely observed documentary, so you're you're making from from the inside, and and you know you're you're, you're relating to people, um, and you're getting insights into their lives, um, really profound insights, and, and often ones that might be um, slightly embarrassing if they're <laughs> suddenly posted on a Facebook page, you know, uh, because it'd be a bit out of context. Um, I had this issue with Hungry Tide too, and I was working with a woman who was um, <clears throat> slightly nervous, more than nervous, you know, about the impact the film would make, particularly in her own community. Uh, and um, <clears throat> Kiribati is a small nation, everybody knows everybody else. Uh, if I were to post something on, on the Facebook page about something that, that, that Maria had, had said to me, uh, um, or, or even mentioned that her father was, was dying and he did die during the filming, or even after his death, it would have been quite inappropriate, really. You know, it's, it's something that um, it was for Maria to do, um, personally, and not for the film to do. But when, when the film was finished, of course, it's, um, then it becomes more of a kind of a... You know, it's, in, it's, in, it's in the public domain. And everybody wants to know about the characters, and 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 that's now open slaver. Um, or oh, can you tell me more about this or more about that? Um, and you've got to prepare the characters for that too, because they're often not used to um, such public attention. Um, when I made Molly and Mubarak, uh, you know, neither of them were, were used to what what happened after the film, after the film's release. There was a lot of interest. Um, and 
there was even a concern that maybe um, it could impact negatively on Mubarak as a young asylum seeker and, and on his uh, claims for, 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 for residency, for, uh, yeah, for, for a permanent visa. Um, fortunately, that uh, didn't, didn't affect his claim, but it was something that was being discussed quite a lot. Mm -hmm.